So we're gonna go ahead and go through the patch notes and there's some interesting changes in here and some people have been asking for for multiple years and this didn't even happen in Warzone 1. So we'll go ahead and talk about some of those things as well as Superstore coming back, a new version of Superstore that'll be on Urzikstan. So let's go ahead and go through it. So global, obviously the battle pass is gonna be in everything. So in terms of performance, it looks like they addressed a huge issue that was plaguing Xbox. I know this was planned for quite a while, so that's good that that got taken care of. But I, that, I don't know if this is going to address the uh, network issues that lead to packet loss and, and, and those types of things, packet burst. Um, so hopefully there's some addressing to that because that's been one of those issues that's kind of been lingering for a while. And I wonder if that helped. Uh, map update. We get Urzikstan Superstore. And this is going to be a new version of Superstore. And, and I think this is interesting too because we've already been leaked that uh, Verdance is coming back at some point, whether it's at the end of the year or next year, which has been rumored. Um, nothing's ever been confirmed by you know Activision, but I think that uh, with this, it gives a kind of an idea of how we could see changes to that map because this is pretty significantly different than the Superstore that we had way back when and in Verdansk and Verdansk 84. They're both incredibly different. The roof has all these different areas of cover. There's different ways to get up and down. There's zips. There, there's lighting. You know, so there's a lot of different changes that I think will impact how the, the map is played in those specific areas. And if you're really looking to get a full Superstore experience, I think um, you, you're going to want to try the resurgence mode, right? So that's kind of how that part works. Supposedly the loot on this is supposed to be really good. I was on a call with the devs this week. Uh, so I can kind of, you know, get a little bit more information that maybe doesn't end up in the patch notes, but the loot's supposed to be really good and worth dropping there. So it can be a hot drop. Um, new modes, Urzikstan, we got Urzikstan Superstore. It's going to be 28 players. So I'm not sure how that'll work. Maybe they'll move that around, but that's just kind of the starting base for quads. Um, so you'll have that number of teams with the 10 minute time limit. So those will be a little bit faster matches. It'll probably have a little bit more tempo of like a multiplayer match, which usually lands right around nine-ish minutes so 10 minutes right there uh, and that's probably the absolute longest length if you're actually playing decently fast and you wipe the lobby probably get some fast matches in if you're looking for some wins i don't know if there will be like the wins will count or anything like that because it's an ltm get the playlist plunder will be there um no okay cool that's kind of how that works so they introduced the system last season and now they're expanding on it so you'll get more weapon camos blueprints other cosmetics and these are the ones that are warzone specific challenges with those you know those four different categories just expanding on that so now we'll get a combat experience expertise one uh cooperative so communicate help your squad mobility and then redacted so i guess people will have to figure some of those things out uh, adds a little bit of mystery to that so you got some challenges to do uh, and then you earn the sport icon weapon blueprint by completing all challenges. So this is going to be new for all maps and all modes. We get the redeploy drone beacon. And this is kind of like the deployable balloon that we had in, uh, in Warzone 1. Uh, I think this one's going to be able to move a lot faster. And then when you throw it, the, the range at which you can throw it is much further. So if you're sprinting, you can throw it ahead of you. It'll come out and then you can go to go up the balloon and then you're you're gone. Well, the drone, right? Because there's a drone now. Uh, and so it'll be just basically one of those and that'll be for all modes including rank uh, Which is kind of important and then that means it'll apply to world series of Warzone and Pretty much every mode resurgence and big map. So you get good flexibility with that uh, right off the bat uh, All maps resurgence. So there's gonna be bounty contest public event uh, and this one's actually a very cool one because uh, basically on the on the map what will happen is uh, as soon as this public event happens There's gonna be a bounty that pops up for you and everyone on the map And then when you go and kill this bounty, it'll automatically shift to the next one So this is kind of primarily for people that are a little bit more hyper aggressive And then also counters a little bit of camping because if you go for the specific bounty You're gonna get some money cash whatever and then you're gonna be able to go for the next bounty the next bounty and the next bounty uh, and, and you'll just be able to chain those together if you're hyper aggressive and that again is going to be for all maps resurgence. I, I I hope they'll eventually make it a big map. I think they said they were play testing it still, so that might be something that comes around there. Uh, but I think majority of people are still kind of on resurgence. Um, we'll see kind of how that plays out with Superstore and maybe some of the meta changes that hopefully happen, which haven't happened, which we'll talk a little bit about when we get to the weapon section. Um, Champions Quest gets refreshed. We're going to get an animated uh, camo. Uh, they said they saw the feedback, basically people complaining 
um, that season four's resurgence camo kind of sucked. Uh, and they decided to go ahead and give us something a little bit better. This actually does look better when you actually see the animation, the video of it, instead of a still shot. So go from there if that's something you want to do. They modified the Champion's Quest to make it slightly more attainable because it was kind of like bugged before, where it was just way too much time and you had to use some like ultimate meta strat to even accomplish it. And it didn't really feel like an organic nuke. So they're, they're adjusting those types of things too. Uh, all maps, all modes, buy stations. We're going to have the RDB. We're going to have that redeploy uh, beacon thing. Uh, and that, that there's going to be a limit of two of those, 4,000. And then this will exclude Vondel. Uh, I think they plan to add it to Vondel later on. Um, they said there was some technical issue where on Vondel, it would break something. So it's not in Vondel yet, but it, it, that's the goal to get it in all uh, maps as well. Uh, in Resurgence, Specialist has been added to buy stations. So limited stock, 30,000, excludes rank. So you won't be able to do that there, but 30,000 can add up pretty quick. You get a bounty or something like that. If you hadn't already done one of the other methods to get a Specialist bonus, you'll be able to jump in and get you know, the one there for 30,000. Champion's Quest timers, they were reduced. And you can see right here about 40 seconds, 10 second difference, 10 second. So it's not like they'll probably tune it even further, but that gives you kind of an example. If maybe you tried last season, it was like, dang, it's just way too hard. Uh, redeploy weapons. So you get the handgun attachments have been refreshed, updated a few primary weapons supplied later into the match. So that'll be cool. Um, public events, the introduction of bounty contest reduces the chances of the following occupation scans on Rebirth Island and Vondel, and then the rogue signal on Fortune's Keep. Solo contract behavior, contracts will no longer be canceled if you are eliminated in resurgence solos. So that could be a good thing or a bad thing, uh, depending on whether or not you wanted the contract to end. <laughs> but that's kind of how that goes. So we get a brand new SMG, uh, and this one is pretty interesting because it is an SMG that comes with a base 50 round mag. Uh, and they said that although initially when the weapon, if you compare it to the other guns, it's typically like a little bit slower, but because you don't have to equip a mag to slow it down, um, it ends up net being faster if you're actually using other SMGs with an extended mag. So it should be a cool one that you get a saved, a free attachment that can be put towards mobility or recoil or, or something along those lines, or if it has terrible iron sight, an optic, right? Um, so we'll have that SMG, and then we get the STG-44, uh, which is going to be like more of a modernized version, uh, I believe. Uh, this one was a little bit interesting, because when they described this one, they said it has a little bit of recoil, but a predictable recoil pattern, which, for the most part, all the recoil patterns are pretty you know, predictable. It's just sometimes they suck and sometimes they don't. So we'll see how that works. It could be useless if it is... Uh, has too much recoil. It just not get used in the game, right? New aftermarket parts they will be coming out each week. The first one's going to be the more sniper rifle. That'll be this week. And then each week we'll get a new one, one for the RPK, uh, one for a bunch of other weapons. And then we're going to have uh, the row LMG. So that's four different ones. All right. And I guess this, I said that there would be an update to the MCW. I've been talking about this one for the past week. If you guys have been in the streams, I thought the MCW would get a buff. Uh, and this could be a really big deal. Uh, we'll have to see how the numbers actually lay out. I think it should hopefully kill one TTK faster if the lower torso, which is the stomach, gets included in this. So you get the faster TTK. So not lower it from over 900 down to closer to 900. SVA, max range increase. So they end up buffing the SVA in a different way. The bow. Oh my God, I have guessed all of these. So that this is actually funny if you've been in the streams. So max range increased. We got the decreased recoil. Yeah, so this one should hopefully make the bow in the meta conversation. I'm glad we uh, got Obsidian on this one so that we'll be able to have that. And then we'll grind the new camo that we just got, um, which gets added this season. So MTZ556, uh, this one also, dang, I did not predict the M4 though. I did mention this in the call though. I was talking kind of a little bit of smack when, when, when I, not smack, but like I was respectful, but I basically said, what the heck's the problem with these updates on these meta weapons? And why don't we have any MW2 guns that we can use? And I specifically said the MW, like, like M4 hasn't been usable last year or this year. What's the deal? And why do we have all these attachments that are garbage? And apparently there's going to be a big, like major update in the, in the future. Uh, 
prior to the integration, which will kind of like get rid of all the junk attachments, I think, or rework them. So that's then, but at least they do something. Hopefully this is a, something because this is two big changes uh, for the furthest damage and the near mid damage, which that should be enough to lower the TTK, but will it uh, impact the recoil or whatever? I don't know. Uh, Bass B, uh, it gets a slight range buff. Leg modifier on the attack V gets a slight buff. I don't think that one's going to do anything for that one. Uh, it's one of those minimal damage things that I covered in that video where I said, oh, they do something, but it doesn't really do anything. That's both of these. These aren't going to do anything. Those are essentially like nothing. That's essentially nothing. That, that, I don't know. So AMR was actually uh, pretty decent before, but these range changes won't be enough to make it do anything. FJX Horus. Uh, we actually get a little bit of a nerf. Surprised on that one. Superi gets a movement nerf. This is kind of what it needed. Uh, it's still going to be in the meta. It didn't change too much there. Uh, you just might change your attachments from tactical sprint to the movement ones, strafe speed. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but it didn't change any of the damage, so it still kills the exact same speed. WSP9, we get a slight nerf. What the heck are we doing here? I know this is one of the, like the tried and true guns that have been through multiple seasons, but kind of weird for them to modify the leg multiplier to add a shot to kill. Uh, it did kill fast, but it had the ultimate bolt delay, so you kind of have those to deal with. Mini Bok, really? Mini Bok getting treatment like that? That's a five extra damage and multiplier changes? Interesting. PDSW, the Vel, nice. These are all buffs. And then we get the Vasnep. Not probably enough to change these because uh, for a lot of these, they were kind of so far out of the, the meta conversation that they might like barely even be on the like conversation, but like probably not. We'll have to see where the actual TTKs land uh, for a lot of the, the, these uh, changes. Uh, max range for the Bruin added a little bit more range. Uh, lower torso modifier gets nerfed on the Holger. Uh, I guess they're taking care of the Holger 26. Uh, pull em yacht gets a slight buff. Obviously, it's getting, you know, some stuff there. Attack Eradicator gets a pretty substantial buff. 28 from 24 is actually kind of insane. This is a huge deal because Attack Eradicator was pretty good to use before. Not meta, like hard meta, but it was pretty good before. So an extra four points is pretty significant, I think. Attack Evolver, slight buff to leg modifier. That probably won't do much. Uh, even though that's an okay gun. Uh, Reclaimer. Uh, increased fire rate to 200. That's actually kind of cool. Uh, fixed the issue causing inconsistent damage dealt to enemies in both fire types. All right, that's good. Uh, but that's good for like zombies or something because 200 RPM will be pretty nice. And then we got the broadside. Uh, decreased vertical recoil. Easier to use, I guess, there. Core 45. Uh, decreased fire rate um, to 240. And then now decrease those down from there. So hard, hard, hard nerf. Like, that is terrible. What the heck? To 240? It's not going to even feel like the same gun? All right. Sledgehammer, decrease movement speed by 22%. Oh, that's awful. It used to be kind of fun. You can launch, launch people with it, but yeah. Updated. Resurgence. Compete in the next... Uh, uh, Rank play, yeah, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, rank play, same thing. We need it for big map, even though I'll play it. Here's one of the huge changes. We get dynamic gas mass overlay. This is something we have been asking for forever. Didn't think it was possible. We've experienced it in bugs. And essentially what this means is when you equip a gas mask, you have a gas mask on, you go into the gas, it goes, and you leave the gas mask, it goes, and that's it. That little overlay goes on and off. It's not gonna take an inventory spot. You don't need to worry about equipping it, unequipping it. Once you have it, you have it on. And that's kind of how it works. I'm not sure how it's going to work with breaking. Uh, but basically, what we've been asking for, for four years, this wasn't even in Warzone 1. It was terrible all throughout Warzone 1, all throughout Warzone 2. They made some changes and they tried things, but they all sucked. They finally did what we asked for from the beginning. <laughs> I don't know what happened and why they couldn't do it, but it's done. Reinforcement flare, quality of life. We've added a reminder in the HUD whenever your squad mate is eliminated and you have a reinforcement flare. Okay, cool. That helps. Uh, infill parachute. Added the parachute camera perspective setting to the console graphic menu. Um, this setting allows for players to change between first and third person view while parachuting during the infill. 
Okay, plate carrier. The stove prompt now appears properly when looking at a plate uh, carrier loot card. Okay, some bug fixes. Fix an issue preventing and find a party feature. Yeah, a lot of people are complaining about that in the comments section. Fix several issues causing crashes and errors. That's always good. Some, okay, basic changes there. Enough of the, the weapons. Hopefully that's changed. I still want more. Just more. You know, the meme with, uh, with Kylo Ren. That's, that's what I want. Update based uh, on these weapons. Because I think these have a much greater impact than anything that they could ever do to the battle pass or the map or whatever. Like, if you have to use the same weapon every single day, it's boring. I know some people argue, oh, you don't have to. Yeah, but then, like, you're not competitive and, and you end up losing gunfights that you know you would win by just switching weapons. So, uh, hopefully this gives us a little bit closer to that because there are a couple changes in here. That seem significant, but we'll kind of see how that goes. We'll be live leveling and testing all this stuff over on Twitch if you want to check it out. Link in the top of the description. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.